This is session three, regional trade agreement under international trade and commerce. Regional trade agreements are made with a view to keep deep integration between countries or region with a major share of world trade and foreign direct investment that is FDI. Beyond simply increasing trade links, the deals aim to improve regulatory compatibility and provide a rule-based framework for ironing out differences in investment and business climates. An FTA is a major FTA when it meets the following three conditions. First, negotiated by three or more countries of regional grouping. Members collectively account for 25% or more of the world trade. And third is, substance extends well beyond the current WTO discipline. Why mega RTA? To support the emerging production pattern of global value chains in a WTO plus framework. WTO plus is an integrated framework for trade related technical assistance including for human and institutional capacity building to support least developed country in their trade and trade related activities revision. Imperative due to interplay of variety of disciplines such as investment, government procurement, regulatory coherence, competition policy, e-governance, telecommunication, sanitary and phytosanitary measures and technical barriers to trade that is SPS and TBT standards, supply chain, state-owned enterprises that is SOE, environment clearance, movement of natural person customs trade facilitation. In this session, we are going to discuss four significant mega RTA. First is TPP that is Trans-Pacific Partnership which account for over 26% of world trade in goods and services. Second is TTIP that is Trans-Atlantic Trade and Investment Partnership which accounts for 43% of world trade in goods and services. And third is CPTPP that is Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. And next is TISA that is Trade in Service Agreement. Let me start with Trans-Pacific Partnership TPP. TPP began as an expansion of Trans-Pacific Strategic Economic Partnership Agreement TPSEP signed by a small group of Pacific Rim countries comprising Brunei, Chile, New Zealand and Singapore in 2005. In 2008, the then US President announced that the United States would begin trades with this group leading Australia, Vietnam and Peru to join. The TPP is an Asia-Pacific regional trade deal that too includes the United States, Japan, Mexico, Malaysia, Vietnam, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Chile, Peru and Brunei. The TPP, a comprehensive regional agreement dealing with a wide range of trade and trade related issue. In 2012, Canada joined the Trans-Pacific Partnership that is TPP trade negotiation. Now there is a journey from TPP to CPTPP. In January 2017, the US pulled itself out of the deal on the ground that it is continuing exploitation of our country. That means the US thought that way. The other 11 TPP participating countries were determined to salvage the benefits of the agreement and work to develop alternative approaches to bring the trade deal into force. The 11 Pacific Rim countries agreed in May 2017 to revive it. These countries signed the agreement what is called CPTPP that is Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership in March 2018 in Chile. The CPTPP is an FTA between Canada and 10 other countries in the Asia-Pacific region. These 10 countries are Australia, Brunei, Chile, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore and Vietnam. CPTPP basically keeps the core content of TPP. It has 20 articles running into 8000 pages. Interestingly, China was not part of TPP though she wanted to be part of it. China was trying to get another deal with 7 TPP members. The US and other countries showed disinclination to allow China to be in at the negotiation stage. 
There was a prima facie evidence that China attempted to hack emails on the proceedings of CPP with an obvious motive. This was not merely unethical but bizarre China can go to any extent in violation of rules of the game so long it helps itself to rejuvenate within course. Difference between TPP and CPTPP. CPTPP now includes various sector trade and intellectual property. These 11 member countries collectively account for 13.5% of global GDP and 15.2% of total global trade, much lower than the TPP scale because of withdrawal of the US. The CPTPP still covers the huge market like Japan, Australia, Canada and Mexico. It is still a strong regional grouping though not as huge as TPP. Now there is a transatlantic trade and investment partnership that is TTIP. The TTIP is the largest bilateral trade initiative ever negotiated not only because it involves the two largest economies in the world but also because of its potential global reach in setting an example for future partners and agreements. FTA between the US and the EU covering more than 30% of world's trade in goods and services across sectors will account for about 40% of world's GDP. It could boost the EU economy by 165 billion US dollar and US by 125 billion US dollar. The TTIP negotiations were launched in 2013. What are the objectives of TTIP? The TTIP seeks to enhance global trade of quality standards between the continents, IPR, rules of origin, condition policy, labor and environment, SOP that is standard operating procedure for multinational enterprises and tarification at lower rate. It is likely to add more than 2 million jobs in the US and EU. Because of its vastness, it is likely to have significant impact on other economies of the world. Negotiations were halted by the US president who then initiated a trade conflict with the EU. The US and the EU declared a truce of sorts in July 2018, resumed talks but could not be concluded. On April 15, 2019, the negotiation had been declared obsolete and no longer relevant by the European Commission. Trade in Service Agreement TISA. Services are rising component of global GDP. This sector contributed approximately 69% of global GDP and 51% of global employment in 2015. The contribution of services to the GDP is even higher for developed countries. In the US, just as an example, services account for 80% of the GDP. TISA was initiated by the US and Australia. It is an agreement to liberalize trade in services. TISA is based on WTO's general agreement on trade in services that it gets, which involves all WTO members. It is open to other WTO members and compatible with WTO GATS framework. Currently, TISA is being negotiated by 23 WTO member countries including the EU. Together, the participating countries account for 70% of world trade in services. The key provision of GATS, its the scope, market access, national treatment and exemption are also found in TISA. 21 rounds of talk have been held in Geneva so far and there is no set deadline to end the talks. Objectives of TISA include opening up markets and improving rules in India such as licensing, financial services, telecom, e-commerce, maritime transport and professional moving abroad temporarily to provide services, protecting the national interest and people's sovereignty from financial instability and corporate power, promoting labor standards, guaranteeing quality public service accessible to all. Way forward, the relative importance of the service has been increasing in most economy and consequently in the global economy. The EU is the world's largest exporter of services with tens of millions of jobs throughout Europe in the service sector. By opening up trade in services, it is hoped that TISA will help opening up markets for services which would mean more growth and jobs. The key to better export performance lies in improving soft infrastructure such as telecommunication, business environment and technology. To sum up, services are a major component of global GDP and employment. And a rising component of global trade and investment flows.
This is the largest sector of the Indian economy contributing significantly to economic growth and foreign investment flows. India is among the top 10 WTO member country in trade in services and the country has positive trade balance in services. However, global trade in services faces a number of barriers at the border and beyond the border which makes it difficult for service providers from developing countries such as India to access key market in their preferred modes of service trade. India must leverage its comparative advantage in services.